Good morning, folks. We had that special galactic magnetic field and electric current sheet video come out last night. Today, we'll dive back into climate and cosmology, check out some weather extremes, review the lithospheric watch for quakes and volcanoes, even if we're pretty sure where the crescendo is going to take place. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun, revealing a bit of a quiet sector incoming as the coronal holes in active regions begin to rotate through Earth-facing heliographic longitudes. The solar wind from the coronal holes may arrive today or tomorrow, but right now, purple plasma speed of the stream is dropping. Solar wind is more like a solar breeze this morning, and geomagnetic conditions are happy to sit quietly and await a more intense stream. Well, folks, the big story on Earth right now is the Tal Volcano in the Philippines. Fantastic lightning shots coming from almost every video online showing the eruption. When I saw this shot from an aircraft, I knew the satellites would catch this one, and oh boy did they. This is the sulfur dioxide release. Not exactly difficult to pick out the pluming activity there on the island nation. Now, while we did get a solid eruption yesterday, they are seeing no signs of it stopping. In fact, they say there's more to come, with an even bigger eruption possibly only hours away. Eyes open today. Let's stop by the Middle East, where winter stepped it up a notch and blanketed the region with snow, including regions that are not supposed to see snow. 43 people are dead. A note of interest, the rain line is going to stretch across the Atlantic between these cells, and the same rainfall in the southern states today will connect to rain and snow in the UK, which wraps back around across Canada by tonight. That is one long storm. The latest and most definitive survey and forecast of the maximum solar storm has now been determined. Well, sort of. They say no such upper limit can be known but that all existing extrapolations based on the active data set are unlikely to capture the severity of known storms that occurred before the time of the data set, and that our best extrapolations are likely underestimations. <laughs> no kidding. Let's move on to earthquakes as another one comes down the line in the electromagnetic precursor phenomenon list. While this electroquake forecasting was considered a bit nuts a decade ago, now there's a textbook on it from the American Geophysical Union. Hundreds of peer-reviewed papers published, including two of our own. I've linked this video below, which breaks down the basics, and you can read our paper and learn to predict electroquakes yourself at quakewatch.net. Now, speaking of which, we've got both the solar polar magnetic field's annual reversal expected about now. We've got nearly five spheres lining up, including Saturn, which always gives us something interesting. And in all likelihood, it's going to be that volcano. Sure, we will keep watch on the other factors globally for other zones of interest, but they do say that bigger one is coming soon. Kronos is not surprised. Let's jump out to space before bringing it home to close. We are obviously hoping that we find exoplanets out there that could support life. But in a new study, a group of scientists is claiming that clouds on an exoplanet could significantly hamper our ability to spot water vapor in the atmosphere. Now, while this does make sense if you're looking at a Jupiter or Neptune-like planet, something tells me an Earth-like planet covered with clouds made of water is not exactly going to have a problem returning the proper spectral lines. Let's jump out even further and give a quasi-sarcastic golf clap to Berkeley and Lawrence Livermore National Lab scientist Dr. Linder. He was part of the team that helped determine the electromagnetic driving force of cosmic jets being stronger than gravitational forces, and while his idea here may be correct, would it kill him to just say magnetic universe? What's being referred to here is the large-scale repulsion and attraction force in the cosmos, sort of how you see the magnetic fields of a bar magnet wrapping from one side to the other. Well, after mapping the local superclusters of galaxies, they have figured out that we and basically everything around us is in the middle of that flow, where it's bowing out the most, which could trick us into thinking the universe is doing something like expanding for the time being. But we also have more importantly traced the velocity profile of the clusters. Astronomers know that everything is coming from one side and flowing around to the other. Might as well replace the central clusters with a bar magnet. So Eric, I'm not going to fix a paper title two days in a row, but I see what you did there. Okay, let's come back to Earth because I'm not quite done jabbing. Oh goodness, a new paper confirming human-caused global warming, and it's in GRL, one of the top five geophysics journals on Earth. Too bad they forgot what year it is and used CMIP5 data. That's the one with no solar particle forcing, no cosmic rays, which Princeton says has terrible accounting of cloud forcing and which Harvard claims contains false ocean temperature data. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, 
welcome to the channel. Below this video, find a link to our climate forcing movie. The experts are changing the game. Well, hold on, changed it already. But the news is stuck in the past along with many of the researchers. We are in the middle of a follow-up series on the climate, which will continue later this week. And let's end today with a throwback to a 2005 electric current induction paper about a 2003 solar storm. Folks, this is the same induced electric currents many of you read about in a blog this last week. Electric currents surge through the Norwegian soil. Well, this is what space weather does. We just didn't get to hear much about it the last few years while the sun was in its minimum period. So if you've joined us in the last few years, it's very understandable. But this is the same thing tracked by the geoelectric model in this country, which I do wish extended to the whole world. But furthermore, these currents bleed heat via resistance-driven joule heating. And in addition to those other things I mentioned before, currently, climate models give a zero weight to electrical heating in the lower atmosphere from these processes, which is invalid just about any possible way you imagine it. We greatly appreciate your support. Check out last night's video if you missed it. It is linked below. That climate series continues later in the week, so catch up if you have to. Eyes on the Philippines for the big eruption. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.